All right, so I just got my pump in the mail. Uh, it's a remanufactured pump. Pretty much all of them are like that. If you find a new one, you're pretty lucky, and it costs almost about two grand. But this pump is actually from a company out in California called B slash Z Rebuilders. Um, they were actually a reasonable price. Um, I think it's a hundred and ninety-five dollars for the pump, and then is a hundred dollar uh, core uh, for that. So two ninety-five altogether. Um, and it got to me in about two days, which was uh, phenomenal. And, you know, just taking it out of the box so you can kind of see what you get when you have a remanufactured pump. That's pretty much all they're doing right now because I think if you check around, you'll see that uh, new pumps are no longer being made because the car, you know, is kind of old. So uh, after this, let me switch you over to how important this pump is to the system. Here's how ABC works. Placed between the vehicle body and the wheel is a suspension strut consisting of a steel coil spring and parallel shock absorber, together with a hydraulically controlled servo cylinder. The movement of the cylinder in the suspension strut modifies the length of the spring. This process generates forces that automatically adjust the springing and damping of the car at frequency ranges of 5 hertz or lower. The powerful microcomputers control the high-pressure hydraulic system through signals from sensors that constantly indicate the changing movements of the vehicle body. Hopefully that gives you a background of how important this pump is. So here's a picture of all the screws, E12s, that you're going to take off the pump in order to remove it. So um, let's begin. You don't have to, but it makes a little bit more room to just uh, take off the radiator hose. Um, that's going here in the front of the engine you can go ahead and remove that and it will give you a little bit more room to access uh, these screws which are t12s i'll um, show you guys right here these are all the t12s uh, that will be used to take oh, i'm sorry e12s why do i keep saying t12s uh, e12s to take these bolts off now this also includes the ones that are actually right here and there's a few hidden ones that are behind there i'll show you later on you want to take right. the whole uh tanks off for the active body control fluid in the uh, power steering fluid which is a simple job to do um i'll show you in the next clip all right so next you're gonna need a 22 you're gonna need an e12 and then you're gonna take off all the screws now the first one with the 22 is going to be uh this right here this is one of the lines that go uh to feed fuel i mean fluid to the back and you're just going to take a 22 and break that off and unscrew it all right so that's what you're going to do pretty much next after you have this whole area cleared uh for that step the next ones that are going to have to go off is right here on this side of the pump and then behind here you have this other one that's connecting uh, a line also. These are both, this one is a 19, and these are both 19. So. All right, to get that off, take your 19, and you're gonna pull it towards the front of the car. And you can just start removing the screw. It's a big one. Uh, slowly like that, it'll come off. All right, and then your next one I'm gonna show it's right but there. Hiding below, here's your tensioner. So here's the ABC pump, right? Then right below that is the tensioner. Now to move the tensioner, it's actually, <laughs> oh man, I don't know how I can show you. Okay, so here's the tensioner. Now in between this, and this, it's right down here in between there. It's a 17 millimeter deep socket that's uh, to move the pulley up to adjust that. So when you're trying to find it, it's not here in the middle. It's actually in between these two, um, right underneath of the belt right here. It's kind of difficult to get to, so just know that where it is. And then you can just, um, I hope I can do this with one hand. Adjust it up, see? But doing it with one hand is kind of hard to do, so. There's there actually go. two of them. There's one that's right up here that my finger is at, you can't see. And then there's one that's right there. In order to get to that one, everybody says it's very, very tight. 
you're going to have to pull the tensioner pulley back all the way while holding it and then take the screw out so this one up here is simple to get to you can just take it by hand it's the uh e12 socket all right and then you just somehow you can do it i'm gonna use my power tool which just makes the job uh simple as heck and uh while holding that hit the power tool to remove the thing by itself unfortunately i can't film that in use both hands i need one more hand in order to do that but you'll get the idea pull it back while pulling it hit the thing take that screw off because it's only the two that's in the front that needs to be removed all right so the next step you're going to go over to this kind of um brass colored uh holding tank or of the fluid um right there i'm pointing to those screws that we just took out and next you're going to go um right behind these uh two e12s that you're going to take out on top of there one holds the little uh, electric connector uh wire actually and then the other one holds the silver kind of tube on so directly underneath those two holes that i was just pointing at is one of the e12 uh screws that hold on a bracket that i'm trying to point uh out uh right there if you guys can kind of see it um the only way you can uh remove that is you have to take the bolt that's directly under those two holes that i'm pointing to um in order to get that bolt right there all right so i just pulled it out from underneath there so you have that one also all right next up which is it's very 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 hard to do um if you guys can see there is a bar that runs down here and if you could shoot it won't focus anyway down here all the way where it's kind of pointing at right down here at the end there's a bar that goes into the block that holds a uh e12 again that holds it back on this side all right so you have to get that one all the way down there you have to kind of come in from this angle and go straight down into there with uh with hitting that angle it's not exactly straight the, the phone won't focus for some reason but you get the logist so when you come down you're gonna need to kind of go this way to get down in there because the bracket is actually hiding or making it so that you can't get to a bolt that's actually right straight down here and if you'll see once i get a chance to try to show you guys a little bit it's actually screwed onto this one which is facing down here if you guys can kind of see where the light is focused um cameras are there's a bolt right there now that's what's holding it in from the back um and you'll see you know from this side if you go down this bolt is holding it in from the back it's extremely difficult to get to it's a 13 millimeter but that's the one that you're gonna need to get off to get um the rest of the pump out all right all right, so once you get that bolt out of there from the back that I had just showed you, that's the last one that's holding it on. And then you can just, this is heavy, but you can just pull it out uh, at that at that point. But of course you gotta do it with two hands because it's kind of in there sideways. All right. And we have taken the old pump out all right so i'm not sure how good you guys can see that so um once you get your new pump you're going to put your pulley back on um and you put your e12 bolts back in which is pretty simple to do you can tighten it by hand or like i use the air hose that's running into the the side right there um put those back in and then you'll pretty much have to start the reverse process of putting uh, the pump back in buddy all right so just to kind of end the video as you're putting everything back together which is not a very hard job to do um just some tips this system keeps throwing me loops and things i don't know about you can't really find information about that sorry if it's a little bit windy um out here um every every weekend it seems to be windy the crows in the background so anyway 
your when you are tip one the pump right here when you redo your pump make sure you have enough fluid to let the system go through and then uh, fill up again turn the car off let it come back up turn it back on and then you know refuel like that so uh, put more fluid in both of these that way so you have the right amount uh, it may take up to three quarts to do that okay now I think the thing that's most confusing about this pump here is the pump itself could go bad on because this is a tandem pump the front part right through here is the power steering and then the back through here is for the active body control now I got the new pump and installed it and the ABC light came right back on wasn't moving up or down I noticed that <laughs> I'm getting to the point here this right here if you see where I'm kind of focusing at right here I had to switch out from the one that they sent me to my old one because it still worked the power steering wasn't working and the pump said ABC stop you know drive carefully so if I change that that may be a culprit to the pump also not working correctly as well which a lot of people may not know but I believe this little device that I'm pointing to right right here is a solenoid that provides um, extra I guess pumping ability maybe um, that's all I know that is a solenoid uh, if you probably look that information up a little bit more you can find our information but that could be one of the culprits that are also saying um, you know turn off the pump because the solenoid is not working correctly so just trying to put it out there to maybe help you out if you install your new pump and nothing happens and the ABC light comes on again that could be one of the problems also but then again that's also a fact that you need to go ahead and do some more investigating with uh, the rest of the system